It's Wednesday, September 21st. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to Maker Update Episode 3. Thanks, everyone, for subscribing last week. Uh, it was really amazing. I went from, like, two subscribers to, like, over 150, which feels super nice. Now I just need to keep you all. This week, we're going to talk about a robot dog that probably won't kill you. Uh, we're going to talk about a skull that's made out of string, a lamp that's made out of veneer, and how to measure things with your body parts the parts that aren't subject to shrinkage. But first, the project of the week. This week, I am tipping the hat to Phil Burgess over at Adafruit who came up with this insanely tiny functional arcade cabinet. The design uses a $5 Raspberry Pi Zero to run the game software and a $30 one inch OLED screen to show it off. And even though Phil swears up and down that the build notes on Adafruit are not project quality documentation, it's really all there if you want to go for it, including the software and the bill of materials, all of which use Adafruit parts. And now for news. This week, IEEE Spectrum has an interview with the founders of Ghost Robotics, a company that has developed a four-legged robot that they call the Minotaur. The robot sells for a mere $10,000, which isn't chump change, but really, how can you put a price on robot companionship? What's really cool about this is that the legs have no gearing. They're direct drive. They're attached directly to the motors. And even though they look really springy, what you're really seeing is some fancy software that, through feedback, helps a solid piece of aluminum strut do a really good impression of muscle or spring-like behavior. It's also good at hopping fences, opening doors, and breaking my damn heart with how cute it is. It's adorable. All right, now that part of the show where I highlight a few projects that strike that balance between being cool and also achievable by mere mortals. First up, we have the veneer lamp by Glucosa on Instructables. Beautiful quality hardwood is expensive unless you buy it in thin sheets of veneer. With just a little glue, some clamps, and some cheap scrap wood to wrap the veneer around, she created this sculpture, which I think is cool whether it lights up or not. She put a light bulb in there, I don't think it's even necessary. I also got a kick out of Sugar Skull String Art by Narima on Instructables. It's that time of year when all the Halloween projects are coming out, but this one honestly looks like something I might keep up all year. It's really just nails, board, and string. She includes a template, but judging from the photos, you really don't have to be that precise with nails in the winding to pull this off. I particularly like the gold teeth. It was also a good week for tips. Over on MakeZine, Gareth Branwyn has a good write-up on using your body as a ruler. Using just your fingers, you can make rough measurements of angles, length, and even distance. If you do nothing else with this show, take a tape measure to your hand and fingers next chance you get and see if you can find a couple measurements that are easy to remember. For example, my middle finger, it turns out, has joints that are separated by almost one inch exactly. So I've got three one inch sections in my middle finger that I can use to do rough measurement on things. And that's probably never gonna change. Now I have this mini three inch ruler on me everywhere I go. It's a free tool that I just discovered. And there it is. I also found this cool tip from the Adafruit blog. Next time you need to configure the software on a Raspberry Pi, try using this free Pi Bakery software for Mac and PC. It uses these modular sets of blocks similar to Scratch. If you're still a little command line phobic like me, it's nice to have another approach. All right, now for the past two shows, I've been mentioning upcoming contests that are coming to an end on Instructables, and I'm still gonna do that, just not every week. I think every so often I'll put together a longer list of contests on Instructables, and that's gonna be more useful for everyone. This week, instead, I wanted to mention this contest of sorts called the Deconstruction. It's a national event where everyone's encouraged to make something in 48 hours and share a video of it and how it was made. It could be a thing or a song or something to eat or a painting or a dance, pretty much any creative act. It runs from October 14th to the 16th. It's an online thing and you can learn more about it at thedeconstruction.org. And that's all I know. It just sounded like a fun, non-corporate, artsy thing to get involved with. Maker Fairs! If I do nothing else with this show but help encourage people to go to a Maker Fair or participate in one, then I'm good. There are seven coming up this weekend. You have Madrid, Milwaukee, Vermont, Greensboro, Maryland, and the first ever in Romania, and the first one ever in Nepal. How cool is that? I also wanted to change it up this week and give out a little YouTube Maker Spotlight. 
If you don't already, you should check out and subscribe to the Make Something channel hosted by David Picciuto. The projects are fun and David has a great energy and he doesn't take himself too seriously. He also co-hosts the excellent Making It podcast, which is my favorite maker podcast. All right, so now we've got three episodes of Maker Update. Still a work in progress though, let me know what you think. I uh, changed up the music and dropped it out in the middle there and it may have left my voice too naked. I don't know, you tell me. Did you like the channel recommendation thing that I did there? Was that useful? I can do more of those. Uh, you can get in touch with me. I'm Donald at MakerProjectLab.com. Uh, or you can just leave a comment in the video here and I'll see it, all right? It's really helpful, okay? So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.